Hi guys, Samantha from Juicy Mo Tutorials here and today I'm going to do part 2 in a tutorial that we've had part 1 for already and that was last week when we used, when we made these flower canes and these are our blended flowers and look really nice and these are the ones that we're going to be using in the tutorial so if you haven't seen that part of the tutorial already I do have a link in the description below so be sure to check that out so we are now going to be creating a collar. So you're going to need a sheet of silver that was rolled out on your thickest setting on your pasta machine. And the thickest setting on my machine is around 4 to 5 millimeters thick. You are also going to need some texture stamps. And I'm going to be using my two pebble stamps. And this is the raised version over here. So this stamp will yield this pattern. This stamp will yield this pattern. And we're going to be creating a mica shift. And you can get these stamps on my Etsy shop Jasmine Design. I'll provide a link in the description. So let's start with the first one. And I've dusted these with cornstarch already. So that it, um, so that it doesn't stick. So you'll start from one end of the texture step and work your way all the way up making sure that you don't have any air bubbles. Uh, this clay is nice and soft so we're going to get a really good imprint which is great because we want to make a nice deep mic shift. Okay, and then once you've pressed it in you can use a roller to go back lightly and flatten out the back. Just make sure that you don't lift up your stamp and roll it back down again because that will mess up your texture. And you can use any texture you want for this, just something that is going to yield a good mic shift. There we go, you can see it releases quite nicely and it gives a lovely deep pattern. Okay, then I'm just going to trim away this excess so that I can go roll it out again and take a texture from the other texture stamp I have. So I'll put that to the side and I'll use this silver on the other texture step. Okay, so here are our two beautiful textures and they're basically a reverse of each other. So the mica shift is going to be similar um, but not exactly the same. So let's start, I want to start with this one and I'll do the same for this one obviously. So I'm going to just take that, press that down gently because I don't want to flatten the pattern because this clay is pretty nice and soft. I'm just going to start shaving and I'm using a flexible tissue blade to shave. And you can see what lovely mica frills you get from this as well. You can save those and use those later if you wanted to. And the nice thing about mica shifts is if it doesn't work you really can um, try it over and over and over again and there's no cost in the clay because you're basically just working with one colour so if it doesn't work you just bundle it up, roll it through a pasta machine and try again so I really do love mic shifts, there's no risk involved whatsoever there we are and I'm just going to shave away any piece, any areas that are still fairly raised to try and get it fairly flat because it's a fairly deep texture so you don't want to be going and rolling it flat when you've still got quite a few raised areas and now what I'm doing with this one I will do with the other texture that I have as well and now I'm using silver today obviously but you can use any metallic clay you want you might have done your flower in a different colour, maybe a reddish sort of scheme, uh, colour scheme, but you can try any uh, metallic clay that goes with your flower and try any colours that you want. So don't be afraid to experiment and play around. Okay, so we're basically done here. Don't have to be pedantic about it. 
So I'm just going to grab all of these little off bits. I've got some beautiful little marker frills here, but I don't have to use those, so I'm just going to pop those back in my silver pot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just busy looking at it, checking if I'm happy. You always want to do that. And then I'm going to bring over a plain piece of printing paper. like that and then I'm going to use my fingers to burnish and I find that this is actually better than rolling it through a pasta machine because first off you don't have to worry about possible gunk that you get on the pasta machine because even if you do clean your pasta machine there's always the risk that you might end up having some pasta machine poop on it on your sheet and then that's not very good um, it also means that you might get ripples you might get um, roller lines. It's just better to do it by hand if you can. So I find that burnishing using a plain piece of printing paper gives a really nice result. It does take a little bit longer. So there we are, we can check that, see how that looks. Is it flat? Yes, that is completely flat. Now, my texture stamps have a little bit of extra texture. Now I'm not sure if you can pick this up on the camera but apart from just having the general kind of pebble mica shift hopefully you can see in here that we have slight uh, scratches. Hopefully you can pick that up. And that's because our texture is has got some surface scratches on it as you can see here. So the mica clay will pick that up. So that's our first mica shift. I will now create the mica shift for this one. Okay, so here's the mica shift. And now the mica shift is going to increase when it bakes because um, there's certain elements in the clay that go translucent and so it will deepen the mica shift, especially once we finish sanding. So I've run these through on my third set on my pasta machine, which makes it around a millimeter and a half thick. So they're both the same thickness. And so now I'm going to pop these off to the side because we don't need those at the moment. And I'm going to bring over a piece of silver. This also has run out on the same uh, setting as those other silver ones. Okay, and now I'm going to be using a collar cutter today. Uh, you can do this what I'm doing with a bracelet. We will be doing a bracelet in the next tutorial. So if you want to do a bracelet, uh, tune into next week's tutorial. But for now, we are going to be doing a collar. And I'm going to be using this collar cutter. And now this one's a nice one because um, it's the same shape as the first collar cutter that I put out on Etsy. But it has this donut thing in the middle, which basically cuts out this section of the um, collar. So you can leave this empty or you can insert something because you can get this shaped cutter with the collar if you want to. So you could have one sheet of clay going around um, and you cut out this middle when you're cutting out the collar. Then you can cut out another sheet of polymer clay and put that in there to create um, another veneer inside there. I want to, however, leave this space empty. So what I need to do is I want to place this over here. And I'm just going to trim away this excess. Okay, and now you don't have to get super exact. Um, close enough is okay at this point in the game. So I'm just going to gently press so that I can get a gentle outline. Not pressing hard enough to cut through, but I do want to press enough that I can get the outline. Then I'm going to bring over my mica shift. There, and I'm not going to press down. I'm going to bring over the next mica shift. There we are. And I want to see if this has enough space. Okay, so I'm going to have to move the collar down a bit to get it to fit. But it will fit. Okay, I'm 
what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna trim there. And let me just find that spot there. I'm just busy trimming away the excess so that I can slot these into place. And again, it's not super serious if you get the lines wonky because we are going to be placing our canes here. So the line is basically going to get covered up. There we are. Again, check if you have space and then just go and smooth out that line roughly. I'm just busy squeezing out any bit air bubbles that I have in here underneath the sheet. Okay, now I'll go bring over a sheet of plain printing paper and my goal here is to just flatten these three sheets together. And you can use your roller to do this, but I find that just using the palm of your hand does a pretty good job. Okay, and you should end up with something completely smooth. Now you're going to still see the line here, which is perfectly fine. Don't worry about that. Just keep checking to make sure that your collar will fit, because sometimes it can expand and then uh, you realise that your collar won't fit. But yeah, that fits quite happily there. Okay, now becomes the, comes the delicate process of lifting that sheet up and placing it onto a piece of paper for the next part of our tutorial. Let me just grab that and I'm just popping that onto a piece of plain printing paper and I'll bring that over. And this is just so that it doesn't stick to our tile. In the next bit because that can be problematic. And just smooth it out and there you can see what that looks like. So now pop this aside because you want to trim or you want to um, cut out your cane slices and now you're going to need quite a few slices. So I'm going to cut towards me which is the proper way to do it. You should cut towards you when you're cutting your cane slices not away from you generally when you see people cutting away from them on the videos that's because um, it's better for you to see what I am doing because then you can see what the cane slices look like so let me just show you what that looks like if I cut somewhat towards you you can see what I'm doing a lot better but I can't see what I'm doing so at home cut towards you and I'm going to basically cut out a whole bunch of flower cane slices. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bring this over so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to grab my collar. And I'm going to position it in the right section. And I'm very gently, again, going to press down enough to give a pretty good impression like that and then I'm going to use that as a guideline to where I need to place my cane slices so then I'm going to place them all over and so you can ignore this middle bit here because that's going to get cut out so you don't really need to place canes over there and just place them randomly I'm going to be cutting out different ones from different um, different sizes of canes I'm going to be spotting them around and then what I'm also going to do is this area is basically going to be mostly cane and then I'm going to just start when we come to the mica shift here I'm going to just dot a few around so it's going to be all canes basically over here and then you're going to kind of break it off over here so it kind of looks like they're being blown away so I'll show you what that looks like once I have settled them all down onto the collar so you can see how it's going so far Okay, so here's what it looks like now that I've laid it. So you can see that the petals kind of break off a bit. And over here we have laid the petals quite a bit. So now the next thing to do is to flatten this. So again, the best thing to do is to just get a piece of plain printing paper. Place that over. And I'm gently going to press first 
before I start burnishing. And I'm just going to continue doing this until any lumps that I can feel are gone. Because you want this completely flat. Okay. Then use your tissue blade to gently lift this up. Because the next step is to cut out a collar. And the last thing you want is your piece that you cut out for your collar to be stuck to your surface and even paper foam clear will stick to it just a little bit and so you need to pick it up before you use your collar cutter because if it's stuck you can very easily distort the shape there we go. Okay. now this process while it's on the paper you need to be working continuously you can't leave it here because it will uh, leach the clay and that can cause many problems. So don't leave your piece on the paper for too long. Okay, now I'm just making sure that this fits properly. Okay, and this is stretched just a little bit. So I'm gonna just Gently curve this in a bit because things can stretch, but the polymer clay is very easy to manipulate. There we are. Okay, and I'm just checking that we have no silver bits and pieces. Okay, then grab the entire Thing and make sure you press down all at once. There we are. And then just make sure that you cut out properly. Peel away the excess. And that should come away pretty easily. And then Press down pretty hard here, make sure that it is cut out properly. And then you can go in and pop that out. And very carefully. And now because we put this on paper, it's sticky in the cutter, but it will come out very easily. So just go in and peel that away. Okay, and now because it's very thin it's going to distort a little bit that's fine you can move it straight back into place very easily okay so I'm just going to put that to the side and I'll bring over our stand okay so here's how it looks and it looks absolutely stunning I'm really happy with how this is turned out and you can see a mic shift's quite nice on each side and I've just popped it onto the stand and moved it around to make sure that it's all symmetrical again and now I'm going to use my heat gun on my middle heat setting to just bake this and just be careful you don't want to burn anything and Seems to be a little something that got stuck there from somewhere. There. Okay, and now you just want to set this. You want to heat it so that it um, is stable enough for you to take it off of the collar of the necklace stand and to put it in the oven. So you need to bake it fairly well. So here it is now that it is out of the oven and that's really thin so you can see that it's not going to hold its shape very well. You can flatten it out, you can bend it. You should be able to do this if it has been baked properly. But you can see what it looks like. It looks absolutely stunning. I'm really happy with this. So now I want to apply the back. So I've made 
a mica shift using one of Helen Braille's texture sheets and this is dance floor and it makes a really nice mica shift and then I've stretched out the mica shift so that it's going to fit our collar um, and then I put a sheet of silver on the back so that now it is about five millimeters thick okay so now what we want to do so I want to bring over the collar and I'm going to actually put it on upside down and then I'm just going to roughly trace around it so that I have a lot of extra clay because I'm going to be making a backing now but I don't want to cut out directly because there can be instances where it was stretched and things like that so it's just better to take your cutter and roughly trace out the shape And take that, place that over your collar. Oops. And now, actually, what we should do is we just want to put a little bit of bacon bond over here so that we get stick. Okay. I'm just going to be putting on a little bit. And now, I like to use bacon bond because it's quite thick, and so it means that. Um, it doesn't slip around like the other liquid clays. The liquid, other liquid clays are quite a bit runnier and so they will cause your clay to slip around and then it just becomes a pain. And I'm just popping a little bit on because I just want it enough that it's going to make the surface sticky for me. There we are. Now you just want to smear that around, get a good cover, and you just want a really thin film of this over the surface. And so just take your finger and rub it in. And this will make it just a little bit sticky, and so it will make placing the back on much better. The back will stick, and that's just there. Okay, and then when you've done that, bring over your piece and place that over the top. And then just press on it to get it to stick. And don't worry about fingerprints, we can take care of that later. Okay, and now because this is so thin, I can flatten it out so that I can cut out our piece. And I'm just busy smoothing here because I've got a little bit of bacon bond on the front and so I don't want that sticking. So if you did get any of the liquid clay on the front, just smooth it out. Okay. Then take a craft knife and trim around Your collar. And you want to trim out this section over here as well. You could even leave this as a bezel if you wanted to, but I'm not sure what you would put in there since uh, resin isn't really going to work because this piece is curved. But you could make a bezel and play around with it, see what you could come up with. Might come up with something and do that in a later video. Now we're going to clean up the sides in a minute, but for now we're just busy trimming away any excess little bits. And while you're doing this, any little hang off pieces that you might have had uh, when you cut out the piece and popped it on the collar that you missed, any little dra straggly little bits, they'll come off at this point. Now I'll just pick this up, turn it over, and I'm 
I'm going to go around and press it on properly. And some areas I might need to stretch it a little bit because it needs to fit perfectly. And then just go around and smooth the edges as well because you don't you don't want a sharp itch. So just smooth here so that what you get is a kind of beveled edge. And smooth along over here because this needs to be smooth too. So this has now been smoothed off, so you can see the edges are nice and smooth, you shouldn't be able to feel any cracks. I've done the same in here, and here's what the front looks like. You shouldn't be able to see the um, silver, so any overlaps you need to fix. And just smooth it off as well so that you don't have any fingerprints, which I have done. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven at pretty much recommended temperature for a full hour and I'll make sure that it is baked properly before when I baked this front piece I also baked it at pretty much recommended temperature and baked that for an hour so in all this is going to be baked for two hours in total after we finish this project um, and then when it comes out while it is still hot I'm going to pop it on the stand and rinse water over it to cool it off because you want it to um, set on the stand so even if it goes flat in the oven if you pop that while it is still hot on the stand you'll be able to get it to curve because while the polymer clay is hot it's very flexible if it is baked properly and so you should be able to curve it onto that stand and get it into the right shape and then cool it on the stand so that it sits in that shape and then I'll show you what it looks like Okay, so here it is out of the oven and it's all curved and looking great. As you can see, and the edges are all nice as well. There's no lip or anything that's going to cause trouble. And you can see that the back has a lovely mica shift. It's a subtle mica shift because we did have to stretch the texture a little bit. But it's got a nice back and the front just looks really nice. So now we have to sand. So I'm just going to start with my 400 polishing paper. You can use wet dry sand paper as well. So let me just grab my polishing paper. And I've got a nice wad of them. I keep all of the ones that um, I have used so that I can use them again whenever needed. And I'll just go from my 400 all the way up to my 8000. Okay, here is what it looks like now that it has been sanded. I've also gone and done a quick buff. So you can see it's fairly shiny. It's got a nice satin finish to it. And here's what the back looks like. You can see that's got a slight sheen to it as well. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to give this a coat of liquid clay because it makes it really nice and shiny. And it will really bring out the silver over here. So I've already done a video on uh, Patreon on how to uh, use liquid clay as a varnish. So if you want to, you can go check that out. Um, and I'll provide a link to that in the links below. So I'll coat this with liquid clay and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is how it looks now that I have coated with liquid clay. And you'll find that tutorial on Patreon. And you can see how beautifully shiny it is now. It's got a wonderfully glossy look to it. The mica shift has popped out now, as you can see. The mica shift really has popped out. And it is important that you sand your piece before you use the liquid clay because any fingerprints and bumps and things can appear. So having a really smooth, beautiful surface before you put the liquid clay on will help with that shine. Now, I want to compare this silver to the silver on the back which is where I didn't um, put any liquid clay on. So you can see this is a more matte um, 
kind of background texture it's not as bright and vibrant and this is nice for a backing because if you feel this is like silk and soft because we've sanded it whereas on the front here it's a little bit more sticky it feels more plasticky um, and this is how you get the shine but it doesn't feel great on the skin so I like to leave the back like this but hopefully you can see the difference in the look there it's quite stark so that's it for the collar, it's basically finished. All we need to do now is attach a backing over here and then we can call this project finished. Okay, so you're going to need a drill, and this is just a pin drill. And you wanna drill on each end. There you go, and as a always do I've got my finger there don't put your finger over here it's a nasty habit of mine that I keep on doing but don't put your finger where your drill that's going to come out it's just not a great idea and I just wanted to tell you that because it's something that I repeatedly do it's a habit and it's not good there we are so you've got one hole and then you'll do that on the other one as well Okay, and then once you've done that, you want to put a jump ring through each of those holes. And now be careful at this point because by forcing the jump ring through a hole that is too small for it, you can split the back off. The back can come off, so just be careful at this stage. Okay. And then close that up and bring it around so that, that seam is inside that hole there. Okay. Then you're going to need two lengths of chain and a clasp. Okay. And so I'm going to grab this piece of chain and I'm going to open it up. Just enough that I'll be able to get that around my jump ring. Then close that up again. And on the other end, I'll open that up. Slip my clasp on. And close up. And then repeat on the other end. There we go. And then join them up. And it should fit quite tightly so that when you put it on, it's going to keep these bits from expanding or anything like that because since our polymer clay is quite flexible as you can see um, it's best to have a nice tight piece that's going to keep it in shape when it's on around your neck so that is basically it for this tutorial and so I do hope that it was helpful to you um, I'm not sure if we're going to do a bracelet uh, we might we might not so we'll have to see because I have so many other ideas that I want to post tutorials on for you so there's never enough hours in the day so we'll have to see if there is enough time for me to do a bracelet to match this if not then we'll move on to another idea so i do hope that this was helpful to you if it was please do let me know in the comments i always love your comments and give me ideas on what other tutorials you would like to see some of them i will probably do and if you would like to support me, please do visit my Patreon. I post colour recipes, project tutorials, tip tutorials and all sorts of things on there every single month that I'm sure you guys won't want to miss. So please do check that out. And for the tools that I, some of the tools that I use in this video, um, you can have a look at Jessima Design on Etsy. I have the collar cutter over there that I'm sure you guys will want to have a look at. I have a bunch of different collar cutter designs so you guys can go and make some cool cutters of your own and as always i'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now